In this video, I'm going to show you in a step-by-step -step fashion how to remove the carburetor out of your GY6 scooter. In my case, this is a 150cc scooter. To begin, you're going to want to remove the seat. Now there's one bolt underneath the front edge of the seat. So you're going to open the seat. The bolt to remove the seat is located right here. Once that bolt is removed, you can slide the pin out and the seat will come out. Okay, hold the seat, grab the pin, there's your pin. The next step after the seat is removed, take out the basket and then remove this shroud. Down here, there's two more bolts. Goes into the frame. Loosen the two. Remove the gas cap. Now I'm going to carefully lift this up, place the gas cap back on, now the reason why I put the gas cap back on is because I have an accessory socket here and I don't want to risk having a spark with the gas cap off. So I just pull the blade connectors off, it's one, two, and now my tub is good to go. Now we're going to take the shroud off next. You have a Phillips screw. Phillips screw. We'll do those two first and I'll show you the other screws. I changed everything to stainless. Now, I got to angle this a little further this way to show you. Underneath the mat right here, if I lift up gently like that, there is a Phillips screw located right there. So I'm going to take the Phillips, go down in there, remove the Phillips screw. There's one right here, and there's one over there. Once the screws are removed, lift up, out, and you're good to go on that. I'm now going to move the camera closer so you get a better look at the interior compartment with the carburetor. Okay, we are now looking straight down into the engine compartment. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is remove this bar where the inside of the basket was bolted to. And that is done by removing this bolt here and the same bolt on the opposite side. I have lock washers on this. I'll take this off first. I replace this with stainless as well. Now I'm going to loosen. You could loosen the opposite side. And once that's loosened, you can swing the bar out of the way. Now you can get in at your carburetor. Now there's a clamp on the air inlet hose coming from the filter box. You're going to want to loosen that so we could pull the hose off the carburetor. Okay. Once that's pulled off, 
there's also a clamp on the bottom of this box on the other end of this hose which you can remove to get this hose completely out of the way if you'd like. I just took the clamp off where it attaches to the filter box and I could pull the whole hose out. That's what it looks like, the wider end. This little clip here we can lift up. This is the wire that goes to the enricher or the automatic choke on the carburetor. And there's a little plastic cover that you can also pull off there if you'd like. This goes over the enricher. Next thing to do, you could either follow this wire from the enricher over to here and up and remove the harness, or you could just remove the two screws. There's one right here, should be shiny in the camera for you to see, and there's one between the top of the carburetor and the enricher right in that location. You remove those, then you could pull out the enricher. So let's do that. There's one. Now the other screw on the enricher is kind of hidden. It's right between here and the enricher. You got to loosen that screw on the other side of the plate. You could lift up on the carburetor and get at it that way. Keep turning and then you can swing this little clip up. Once that clip is out of the way, you could pull this straight out. Now I changed this o-ring a while ago and I lubricated it with some silicone grease so you just want to make sure that yours is in good condition if this is cracked it's going to affect your idling and your engine performance just take this and push it to the side now you have a better look at the actual clip it's right there I'm going to put the other screw back in so we don't lose it let me get that in position All right. All right, so this will stay there nicely. I won't lose it. Now, even though I shut the fuel off, there's still fuel in the lines. So what I do is I take one of these hose crimping tools. These are extremely useful. They're not sharp. You put the hose and you squeeze it, and it compresses it so the fuel cannot leak out of the hose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the camera and give you a better angle showing you the hose on the bottom of the carburetor after my fuel filter that I added that I have to clamp off. All right, this hose right here, you can see my filter, the curves, the hose curves, and it goes into the carb. So what I'm going to do is put that right there. No fuel will leak out of that hose once it's removed. Let me put the camera back now. Next thing I'm going to do is take this little spring clip right here, squeeze it, slide it up the hose, and pull that off the carburetor. I'm also going to take this off the line because I want to slide the tube through the hole in the top of the carburetor. There's a hole right here for the tube to go through. This could be just shoved out of the way. The next thing to do is to loosen the clamp on the intake manifold boot which connects to your carburetor. So I'm just going to reach in Loosen that Phillips to the point where I'm able to pull the carburetor out. Let me hold the clamp so it doesn't spin. Okay. I should be able to pull the carburetor backwards, wiggle it a little bit, and there it is, it's out. Now that that's out, the next thing I'm going to do is take off the throttle cable right here. Hopefully you can get a good view of that. The way to remove this end, spin this all the way around like that. Get the wire. And that end is removed. Over here, slide the boot forward a hair. Like that. Take an open end wrench, loosen this side here. I already loosened this a minute ago, make it easier for the camera. Go all the way to off the end. And now you can slide it outward. 
and through that little slit, there's a slit right in there. The next step is to remove the fuel line going in. Mine is held on with nylon ties, just cut those off. These work well, I've never had any of them fail. Okay. That's good to go. And I can pull that out. Before I do that, let me just put a rag under there. Now I'll slide the hose off. And very little fuel came out. Very little. Now the last step, on the very bottom of the carburetor, you have a, another hose coming off with the spring wrapped around it, and it bolts onto the CV cover, and it has a little drain valve on the end to allow you to drain the carburetor. What I'm going to do now is move the camera over there so you can see how to disconnect that. Okay, this is the CV cover. Your variator is right behind here and you want to remove this bolt right here. That's eight millimeter. And slide it off. Now you can take this and pull the entire carburetor out. Just make sure this doesn't get hung up as you're trying to pull it out. All right, you're looking at the area where the carburetor has been removed. Over here is the intake manifold elbow. It's best to take off these two bolts, one there, one on the other side. Inspect it, make sure it's not cracked. Make sure the O-ring that's bolted to the head is in good condition. And if you're not going to unbolt it, at least take a flashlight and look inside to make sure there's no cracks. If there's any hairline cracks, the engine will not run right because you're going to have a lot of vacuum being lost from this elbow. Now we're going to take a look at the carburetor outside the scooter. This is the bottom of the carburetor. This is the hose with the spring wrapped around it that was bolted on the CV cover. If you notice on the very end there is a screw and that allows you to drain the fuel out of the carburetor. Now the first thing I'm going to do is remove the top of this carburetor. I want to show you what's under here. All right, the top has been taken off. This dimple in the cover goes into that spring. The spring puts pressure on this diaphragm. Now you want to check, you want to slide this out. All right, it looks like that. There's a needle on it. Inspect and hold a flashlight behind this or go outside in direct sun and make sure there's no cuts in this diaphragm. If after inspecting this you don't find any cracks or any dried out areas, you could reinstall this because there's nothing else in this area that you're going to want to check out. So slide that back in carefully, rotate it around, there's a notch right here, that's for that little ring, like that. Once you make sure this is seated properly in the groove, insert the spring take the cover and bolt the cover back on. Now once this is back together, the next thing you could check is this little barbed fitting here. Take out the two bolts, one on each side. This is spring loaded. Remove the diaphragm and inspect it also the same way. Make sure you don't see any little holes, cracks, or dried out rubber. If you're rubbing your fingers on it and your fingers are turning black, that means that rubber is heavily worn and it's time to replace this diaphragm. Also look inside here. Make sure these little holes, these little ports, don't have any debris in them. If they do, take something very, very small and just go in there and clean it out. It's a good idea to use some carburetor or brake cleaner in these areas as well. Then you can put this back together. Once you have this back in position, bolted nice and tight, this side of the carburetor is pretty much finished. There's nothing else to be done. Just make sure this springs back good. This screw right here adjusts your idle. Now down here where the enricher goes, there's a little brass opening. Make sure that's clear. 
take your carburetor cleaner with a little straw and shoot it into that little opening. Make sure everything is clear before reinstalling your enricher. Right over here is a mixture screw. You shouldn't have to touch it, but you can always turn it all the way in until it seats and then back off about one and a half to two turns. The way to adjust this is once your engine is heated up and it's idling, you're going to slowly rotate it clockwise to see if the RPM rises or falls. If the RPM begins to get slower, it begins to drop off, then what you're going to do is you're going to stop turning it in that direction and then turn it maybe an eighth of a turn at a time the other direction until the RPM of your engine idles the fastest that you can get it to idle. Once it's at the maximum RPM idling, you know the screw is set. Once this is properly set, you take the scooter for a ride and come back, and then you adjust the idle with the idle screw right here. Clockwise, faster, counterclockwise, slower. All right, once you take off the four screws, each corner of the bottom, carefully lift this off. There's an O-ring under this cover right here, so be careful. Don't damage it. Make sure the bottom is nice and clean like mine. There's no sand, no grit. This is pretty much what it looks like. It's got a slight angle. All right. This is a jet right here. And there's another one in here. So what I'm going to do, very easy. And it's easy to remove. Once you unscrew that, carburetor cleaner in the hole, there's a bunch of little tiny holes. I don't know if you can see it. Right there, we move further away, make it clearer maybe. You're going to want to make sure these are clear. Blast the carburetor cleaner through there. Take some brass bristles from a brush, shove them in the holes, and make sure the hole is clear all the way through from end to end. Thread that back in temporarily. Now there is a number that's stamped on these jets. I could barely make it out because it's so small. It looks like a 104 or 105. That's what that one says. The other one here. You also want to take out and make sure everything's clean in here as well. And also take the carburetor cleaner and a brass bristle brush to clean out any little ports that may be clogged. The last thing you can check, slide this pin out, and then you can lift up the float. Make sure that needle is in very good condition, that it's not worn or has any debris on it. And also make sure that hole there, where it seats, is clean. If it's not, put the brass bristle brush through there and clean it out. Once you check all these things, reassemble everything, and reinstall the carburetor into your GY6 scooter. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my other videos as well. Thank you for watching.